Welcome back to Lit Friday, Augustonians. We have quite the episode in store for you tonight. If you're new to Lit Friday, my name is Jessica Lene. I am the host of Lit Friday as well. I am a poet and art journalist. I am currently sitting in front of a wood and iron bookshelf with disorganized books behind me. I am wearing a white collared button down Stafford shirt wearing glasses and I have on a dark kind of off blood colored lipstick. I am looking at my cat Zora No Hurston who's in a box next to me. Um, and this is the new space that I share with my husband Mustafa. And I just wanted to welcome you into the space before I continued with the introduction. The Friday is a virtual program from the August Wilson African American Cultural Center that occurs on the final Friday of every month. We feature readings and conversations from writers and artists of the African diaspora. Tonight, we welcome multi and interdisciplinary poet and artist Jerome Ellis to discuss their book and album, Master of Ceremonies. But before we hear more about them, let's organize our calendars and also show you the beautiful book cover as well. Jerome's going to describe it when um, they join into the conversation after the introduction. On August 30th, we have Grand Faith Resilience, a workshop focused on keeping acts around gun violence. The workshop will include creating powerful masks to express your emotions, celebrate your loved ones, and honor your triumphs. These workshops are offered in partnership with Project Safe Storage and will be facilitated by Tia Baker and Dr. Lois Dabney Smith. On August 15th, we welcome back Intermission, the Artful Happy Hour series. And on August 30th, we will have author Tyreek White on Lit Friday to discuss his debut novel, We Are a Haunting, which won the Center for Fiction First Novel Prize. To keep up with the August Wilson African Cultural Center, follow us on Instagram, at August Wilson Cultural Center and visit us online and register for our online at awaacc.org. You can also keep up with me on Instagram at hangingthere underscore kitty. And now to introduce Jerome. Jerome Ellis is a disabled artist and a person who stutters. Through music, text, performance, and video, he researches relationships among blackness, disabled speech, divinity, nature, sound, and time. He lives in Tidewater, Virginia with his wife, ecologist poet, Louisa Black Ellis. They love walking in the woods, reading and drinking together. And as one of Jerome's readers, I can attest to the multivalent power, text and music of Aster of Ceremonies. And I cannot wait, Jerome, for you to share more with us. Thank you so much. Jessica, and I'll pause real quick just to tell you that on my end, the, your audio is dropping out at different points, but I'm not sure okay. if that's just on my end or if it's in the video. Um, okay. But I just want to let you know. Thank you. No, we're having some tech issues. So we have actually a re-recording, but we're going to do our best to get you something clean, everybody. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Jessica, for your, your very kind introduction and for having me. I feel so honored um, to be here with you and with, with, with everyone um, joining. Um, and I, um, oh, I wanted to say that, um, yeah, today is the three year anniversary of when I met my wife, Louisa. Uh, so it's very, very special day for me and um, I'm sitting in our our kitchen at our home. Uh, the walls are two different shades of pink that Louisa chose, and I love I love the colors very much. It makes the kitchen feel very very joyful for me. Uh, there's a white refrigerator behind me. There's uh, there are some copper pots hanging from the ceiling, and and an orchid in flower behind me too. Um, and I myself uh, have black hair, black beard. I'm a black person. My skin is like medium brown. I'm wearing my dad's shirt that I've had for many years that has olive green and black and white stripes. Um, 
and I will, I'm holding, going to hold up the cover um, of Aster of Ceremonies, this book uh, that Jessica so kindly introduced. Jessica's holding up her copy as well. And um, whoop, there we go. And uh, the, the, the cover is, uh, it, it's designed so beautifully by Mary Austin Speaker um, for Milkweed Editions, who, who published the book. It's Lavender, and there's a hand-drawn illustration on the cover by the artist Mary Vo Walcott. Um, the illustration is of an aster flower, which uh, looks kind of like a daisy. There's a yellow center and lavender. Petals and green leaves and the words Aster of Ceremonies, Poems, Jerome Ellis appear in white, in black on a white um, background. So I'll just read a little bit of, um, and essay in the book called Liturgy of the Name. Um, that is, a, is largely about my relationship to uh, my own name and stuttering on my, on my name. What are the repercussions for your spirit when we steal your name? Or what are the repercussions of your name being inseparable from a certain silence? The curtain of the syllable. What's your name? This question has made me afraid my whole life. But over the years, after thousands of glottal blocks on my name, I've been led to a grove of unknowing. And as an aside, I'll mention that the term Glottal block is a way of referring to the kind of stutter that I tend to speak with, where my voice becomes inaudible for a time. And I like to think of it as a, a like a river. My voice is like a river going underground while I'm stuttering. What is my name? How should I spell it? Did I consent to be baptized? Were those baptismal waters disfluent? Does my name preserve this perfect disfluency? Another aside, um, the word disfluent for anyone who might not be familiar can refer to um, ways of speaking um, like stuttering. Um, uh, that are um, that uh, and the ways of speaking that can be uh, disenfranchised or or discriminated against because they don't uh, follow dominant rhythms of speech. Um, aphasia as well, Tourette's and other um, forms of speaking. Were those baptismal waters disfluent? Does my name preserve this perfect disfluency? I skip the crack in the sidewalk. I slip out the back door of time. Strip me of my name, all my mothers and fathers, forever. Lead me to the threshold. Of the curtained aperture. Douse me with perfume, abyss on both sides. 
We've been trying to tell you for so long. We finally sent the deer to tell you, hoping you would listen to them. They leapt past you and everyone else, scalded by moonlight. Go see where they drink, follow them. Bring your needle and thread, your mascara and blush. You'll try your hardest not to lose them, but you still will. We invented patience. Go see where they drink. What color are their tongues? Do you fear illusions? I cannot hear them. If we fashion a new silence for you to wear on your breast, will that help the brook is crooked. Drop this book into it once you've learned these words by heart. Hurry slowly. Go see what they think. Perpetual ardor. What might a baptismal melisma sound like? There's a footnote here that reads, Melisma refers to when a singer sings more than one note per syllable. See Aretha Franklin's performance of Amazing Grace on her 1972 album, Amazing Grace. Or Melismatic Baptism, a page illuminated by a melismatic lamp. And um, speaking of singing, Maybe I'll just do a, a minute of um, a song that appears later in the book. Um, the lyrics to the song are composed from um, a newspaper advertisement, a so-called runaway slave advertisement. Um, these were newspaper advertisements that enslavers would publish um, in the 18th century, 19th century, um, in the UK, in the US, in the Caribbean, Latin America, um, when people that they were enslaving es escaped, they would place the advertisement um, with a reward amount in the description of the enslaved in order to try to get what they believed to be their property um, back. And um, a big part of the book, Asser Ceremonies, is, is um, devoted to um, paying honor to um, these enslaved ancestors who, is, who escaped, whose names are recorded in these advertisements, and specifically to enslaved ancestors who stuttered or spoke with speech impediments, um, which is often noted in the advertisements. And there's one enslaved ancestor in particular called Betsy, who according to the advertisement from the 19th century, um, lived and escaped in and around Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and so I wanted to, to rearrange the words of the advertisement following the practice of M. Nor Bessie Phillip, the poet, in her book Zong, uh, where, where, where she uses practices of rearranging words and creating anagrams in order to find a new relationship to um, archives of violence against um, Black people. And so the song's lyrics comes from rearranging the words in the advertisement concerning Betsy, as well as um, seven other advertisements from the same newspaper issue. Our stutters vessels carrying the body up a river to swamp. A land so fertile for a name to 
who go. So those lyrics were, are stutters vessels carrying the body up a river to a swamp, a land so fertile for a name to grow? I'll pause there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jerome. I was hoping that you would sing. I want to take a moment to um, show um, an octagon of water movement for one of the poems. The, the use of color, there's this um, black serif text that is interspersed purposefully with uh, a very hot purplish pink color that's very electric. Um, and so asters um, and red, bird, red bud sarsis canadicids are the names of plants that are in this, this bright color. Um, and I also wanted to take a moment to share for reference for the audience, the longer pages that intersperse mm -hmm. poetry with repetitions of consonants mostly to uh, textually symbolize the stutter um, the resonance of like alphabetic sound. Um, and then there's also musical notes, notation as well. And I'm showing this on screen because the book is so layered and multivocal, but at the same time, you're working with a restricted amount of text. And so I have to start off with what's more of like an expected question, just so our audience can really appreciate everything that you bring to it. So how did you arrive at your current practice and how does it continue to evolve? How did you become a poet as well as a performer, as well as a scholar, as well as a musician, as well as a vocalist? Mm. Well, thank you, Jessica, so much. And thank you for, for, for showing those, those parts of the book. Um, and I wanna say, uh, I wanna shout out to the poets and artist Adam Walfond, um, whose, who, whose book, um, The Wanting Way, um, was published um, right before mine in this amazing series called Multiverse um, that uh, the poet Chris Martin is curating over at Milkweed Editions. Multiverse is devoted to publishing poetry and other forms of writing from folks who identify as mad, disabled, neurodivergent, neuroqueer, chronically ill. And Adam's book, The Wanting Way, I love so much and um, uses the color blue in such a beautiful way throughout the book. And so I was inspired and encouraged by, um, by Adam, um, as well as Chris Martin, who edited Asser Ceremony, and Tiqua Diker, and Mary Austin Speaker, who designed the book, um, and Bailey Hutchinson, who stewarded the whole process, and, and my wife, Louisa Black Ellis, who copy edited all the plant names. There are hundreds and hundreds of the plant names, as you mentioned, Jessica. So I want to thank them, them all for encouraging the use of that, that color and for Tiko and Mary for finding that, as you said, this electric mm. purple pink color that I find so um, so beautiful. Um, and to answer your your question, I, I think I think so much of it for me comes from um, comes from my um, my family, both my my brother Kelvin and my who is who is himself an amazing artist and my parents for, I think, really um, encouraging me from being very, a very young child to follow my nose and, 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 to, and to pursue whatever creative outlet and medium I, I, I was drawn to. Um, I felt so encouraged from them from, from such a young age and, and, and and the public school system also in Virginia Beach, where I grew up, um, similarly was like so just like so so open and so supportive of of creative expression across 
um, the borders of disciplines and for me encouraged uh, uh, a healthy skepticism of those borders. Um, and, la and, and I mean, there's so many people to credit. I would also credit the, um, when I, when I, when I lived in New York city, um, when I was at, at, in college and, 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 and for some years afterwards, um, my, my, my dear friend, James Harrison Monaco, himself an amazing artist, um, introduced me to a communities of experimental theater artists and it, and it, and I and I and and those communities really were were were, were so so committed to um, and so supportive of expression again across music and text and performance um, movement you know and and I I, I I am so grateful to have been welcomed into that that community. So yeah, so there's you know so many people have have for so long encouraged that to where I I have felt very very free to um, yeah not feel restricted to um, certain mediums. And I I'm I, you know my my brain I I I often experience. Um, shame at how scatterbrained I feel. Um, I feel that I like my, it's very hard for me to focus on, to focus in certain ways. And I have, it's been so much, um, so much, so much communities of disabled um, crip folks who have to um, love my brain and to, uh, um to to feel confident that my the way I am approaching creative expression is um is worth is worth doing and worth honoring you know so yeah I thank all those people Another part of that that I think is really important is kind of dismantling this idea of mastery, which often pre prevents exploration and a radical relationship with time. Um, could you say more about how you relate to this idea? Because I think that in our American context, when someone publishes a book or they, they do an album, people have this idea of mastery that comes to define it, especially according to the rubric seems successful, right? Um, and so what's your relationship to that idea of mastery as a disciplinary artist? And how does that change your relationship to time when you are working? Yes. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, I'm grateful for the question. Um, I think one one part of it is um, one part of it I think arises from my relationship with my stutter. You know, the the title of the book, Aster of Ceremonies, of course, is is. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, thank you for the question. I think one part of it comes from my relationship with my stutter, which I think for many years was um, marked by a desire for mastery. Um, I so wanted to... Um, to have a control over over how I spoke, and um, and I and I and I and I and I saw the stutter as an obstacle to to that that control that 
that mastery, um, which I honor, you know, and I and I think is very natural. I think part of the process of working on this book was 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 asking um, what other options are there available to relate to my stutter beyond mastery and there's there's this there's this wonderful book by the scholar Julietta Singh um, the title is escaping me right now but it's but 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 it's something along the lines of beyond beyond mastery it, 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 it's a book that 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 taught me a lot about how to how to seek out different relationships um beyond it and 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 and, and a lot of it came from following following trying to follow the stutter there was there was there was there was a technique that my speech therapist uh dr bajoyan when i was taking speech therapy in 2012 she taught me this technique that you could call like soft contact where if you are stuttering on a syllable that requires your lips to meet like a b or a p or an m she said that if if that one way of approaching it can be to try to say the initial syllable very softly. So if I were trying to say the word brain and I was stuttering on the B, I would try to say the B very softly and so the word could come out sounding like rain. And if I were stuttering on the word master, then the word could come out sounding like, like aster. And so I, as I wanted to, to follow the flower, the, the aster flower that is, that is opened up within the word master and, and 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 of course thinking of think think about the many valences of 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 the word master including in the context of of enslavement um and so i and so i i there so later in the book there's an essay called astering the stutter and in and i'm asking if i cannot master the stutter how could i aster it how could i approach how could I approach the stutter from the from the perspective of Bloom and uh, and the gift of a, of a flower? Um, and I, you know, I I feel too also like I I, th I think I see the is that is that if not winter on your shelf there and Knox too. Anne Carson's work for me has been very instructive in, in how to maintain a spirit of play and, and, and experimentation and, um, and uh, like an openness um, throughout one's 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 life as a as a human being and as an artist, I, I admire her her work so much. I remember seeing her give a reading once, and and it was just like it was it was so it felt like it felt like she was like taking us on a journey into uncharted territory. With, with 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 her words, so it's so so it's artists like her too that that like inspire me as uh, to to um, yeah to keep 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 living in a, in a spirit of a play and and experimentation and um, again seeking seeking relationships to just living outside of mastery and control and um and and the sense of of something being um complete because I, I the last thing i'll say is also because i'm I, I feel like so much of what i have been taught um by by for example someone like 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 the his, the historian's idea hartman for example, in her book, Scenes of Subjection, is she she teaches me a lot about how 
um, how certain um, certain conventions and expectations and habits and structures are around mastery are, you know, so deeply rooted in in white supremacy. Like, 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 like there's this part in, in, in the book where, where, where she's talking about um, how after the emancipation proclamation, there were these books, these like manuals that were written that um, had the purpose of like teaching black people how to be uh, free individuals, of course, modeled after a, a white, a patriarchal, um, wealthy model of uh, of being a human, um, and 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 that comes to mind in 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 your 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 question because she teaches me to be to be skeptical of when I feel the uh, imperative to um, to act in a certain way or to or to produce in a certain way or to relate to a creativity in a, in a, in a certain way. So, yeah. Oh, I, I think you're muted, Jessica. <laughs> When I was reading and listening to your relationship to the stutter um, repetition, the glottal, glottal block, the pause, it reminded me how much of an experimental space even the most traditional of poetry is because mm. you can have um, the form as a direction, of course, but your emotions and your thoughts, right? Those are usually the things that end up being edited later Mm -hmm. um, and so you can't really kind of predict what's going to come forward when you're mm -hmm. writing against um, um, a form or mm -hmm. a challenge. And so oftentimes our bodies end up being the form that mm -hmm. we're writing in when mm -hmm. we're being poets. Um, but Aster was making me think about the stanza in terms of like the poetic space of a room, a line break, an absence, a pause, a reflection, and there seems to be a space in poetry that naturalizes mm. against what our societal standards expectations are. It's kind of like, no, there is, this is where it, this lives actually, right? This yeah. is where this became kind of practice and kind of this essence of like um, repetition, but maybe not, especially when we think about poetry and, and the market. And so mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like liberatory, but it's also, um, this space that just kind of arises, right? Aster really pushes mm. the reader to share that space with mm. you mm -hmm. um, and involves the reader in, be, in finding a path to purposefulness, mm. right? Mm. When allowed to be a witness, right? To mm. the expression itself. And so I wanted to ask you more about your specific relationship with poetry as an experiment in and of a, a, a almost 4,000 year experiment that we've been doing as humans yeah. and the spaces that it does and does not provide you. Yeah. In, in yeah. practice in terms of market, but also as an artist. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica, so much. Yeah. And I, I think that's so wise what you, what, what you say about the body as the form. I think that's I, I I and I never thought of it like that, and I think that's that's so true. I think with 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 Aster, there's there's two 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 things that immediately come to mind. One is um, really really the the book as so much like a a document of me being an a student of of the poet M. Bessie Philip, as I mentioned earlier. Particularly her book Zong, which 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 which, which, which for anyone anyone who might not be familiar is is a, is a book of poetry that 
M. Norbessi Phillip published in 2008, um, where she she takes a two page legal document, um, the the record of a of a case from the 18th century that concerns a massacre of Africans aboard a slave ship. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the legal cases between the ship captain and the ship owner, and they're suing each other over the insurance claim as they're, they're claiming that the people that they murdered are cargo and that, and that they're arguing over the, the money and, 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 and M. Norbessi Philip, who was a, a practicing lawyer as well as um, a poet um, earlier on in her life, she she asks, as she says, she asks, how do you tell the story that can't be told? How do you tell the story of this, this horrific event when, when, when the only written a documentation, primary document is this legal case, um, and and uh, so she, as she, as she says, she locks herself inside of the text, inside of that those two that two page legal document, and creates this whole book of poetry by rearranging the words of the text and creating anagrams of those words, um, mm -hmm. and I. Was well, I, I was reading and 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 studying this work um, in 2020 when I first came across this archive of of again so-called runaway slave advertisements that concern black folks of all kinds, including black folks who stuttered, and I was and I was wondering. Because because her her practice like it 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 felt it felt like like a specific form in that it it imposed a constraint again uh, as you said Jessica the the body as the form in the case of Zong it felt to me like the like the form is how do how am I going to use the I love what you said. This 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 four thousand year old craft and experiment of poetry. How am I how am I going to use use it when I am voluntarily enclosing myself within a couple hundreds of of available words? And I I was drawn to that and drawn to the the link I felt with with these and enslaved ancestors and I. Use I, I use the word ancestor as a not not necessarily a blood ancestor, mm -hmm. um, but when I when I when I started reading these 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 advertisements and I would see the name of the enslaved and of course the the documents are so are so focused on on the violent impulse to recapture them so bad. And, at, and at the same time i was like at the same time that there are their names there there is the, the the phrase that they stuttered there is what they were there was a description of what they're wearing and i felt a desire to f form some kind of a connection or relation with them um which is which has been part of a, a larger project just in my life of 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 relating, no longer relating to my stutter as uh, something that I want to get rid of, but relating it to it as as an heirloom, as something that I've inherited, something that I can cherish. I inherited it from my mother, who is a Jamaican, and and she believes that it came through her mother's side of the family. Um, so I so I've been wanting to be in in ancestral relation with the stutter. So all that's to say is that then um, with with Astor, I, I wanted to ask, how can I um, apprentice myself to Philip's 
method, the 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 formal choice to restrict myself to a to a a specific text, and I and I restricted myself to these advertisements, mm -hmm. and further, how can I follow and let the form be guided by the stutter and and it appears in different ways throughout the book as as, as, as you showed there's a part in the book where um towards the end of the book where i that 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 song i, I sang earlier mm -hmm. um, is part of part of this part of the book where where again it's it's in it's in relation with this ancestor betsy and what i did was, was i made a list of about a thousand plants and again, my my uh, my wife Louisa, she copy edited meticulously each plant name, um, and I and I wrote a essentially a prayer to those thousand or so plants, um, and these plants are all have grown and are and continue to grow in and around Charleston, where ancestor Betsy was, and so I wanted to attend to the plants that she may have encountered in her life there may have use for shelter or medicine or food or beauty, pleasure. Um, and I then read that list of plants aloud to Louisa and to Chris, the editor, my my even dear friend, and, and James, my my other dear friend, recording myself and recording where, where the stutter arose. And then and then as 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 you showed Jessica, then transcribing the stutter directly into the text mm -hmm. as again the form the that the that 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 the text is led by the stutter and 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 and, and a lot of this is also informed by m again by m nor bessie philip she has a poem um where where she writes about the mother tongue and the father tongue and she helps me think about if if my father tongue is English um, of the colonial language that I've inherited. My mother tongue is my stutter. Not only as something that I've literally inherited from my mother, but the way I relate to my stutter is also as a as a kind of memorial for the African languages that I that I, that that have been taken from me that I that I that I that I that I I like so many people in the African diaspora don't know what languages my African an ancestors spoke but when I'm stuttering in in that space of the silence for me it's a, it's a kind of silent witness to those those languages um and then earlier in the book, just one other formal aspect of this, of again, this like this, this kind of dual path informed by Emma Bessie Philip and informed by the stutter is that there are these, um, these kind of fragments. Um, and again, this is very much informed by Anne Carson's work, especially with her translations of Sappho and her attention to the fragment. But, you know, so, you know, the word vessels, for example, shows up a lot in the advertisements because there's often a warning at the end that forbids masters of vessels, so ship captains, of, from harboring the, the enslaved who has escaped. So the word vessel shows up a lot. Um, and so if if there was an advertisement for, for say, for, say, Ancestor Fanny, where it says that Fanny... Um, stutters when she speaks and later on the advertisement says masters of vessels are forbidden from harboring her then a fragment again following philip a fragment that i might shape is our stutters vessels um mm -hmm. and 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 some more um frag like 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 another one that that arises is our stutters chosen our stutters, empty bottles. Is a stutter a way to a necessary river? Mm -hmm. um, so again, 
um, the in this work, I wasn't attending so much to um, questions of rhyme scheme or meter or um, but I was attending more to um, the uh, the formal a constraint of this advertisement is a hundred words and I and I'm and I'm only going to use the words that are in the advertisement and I I and I I, I diverge from Emma Bessie Philip and that I didn't make anagrams I would use words or parts of words. And so the word prose arises sometimes in the book, which is a part of the word prosecute. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it, it feels like it feels like like the act of practicing the poetry as a as a way also of um, of inquiring about the poetics of stuttering itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another text that I thought of when I was reading Aster of Ceremony was Zora Neale Hurston's Sanctified Church. Hmm. And my favorite part of that is the back portion when she is attempting to diagram um, African-American vernacular mm. English mm. and she's making it a point to, you know, associate repetition, quick repetition with emphasis, mm. right? Mm -hmm. In certain forms of pause. And it raised the question for me. I was like, could this be something that we integrated into our speech over time that comes from our ancestors that stuttered, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we found purpose for it in our manner of speech, um, especially. Um, so that was instructive for for me in terms of opening my aperture a little wider, as it always can be opened when it comes to um, poetry and the mm -hmm. value of omission. Mm. Because sometimes the value of omission um, allows the reader to right into those spaces what they need yeah in their thought and yeah. i think that that's very valuable another part of aster of ceremonies that really um took me as a reader was the um determination of you as a writer to push through pain Mm. which I think is like a practice that we may mm. be losing as humans, this ability mm. to sit with, address, and explore loss and pain as a terrain that we are in. Because yeah. there's a part of um, Aster of Ceremonies when we meet the long passages of electric pink-purple text where there's it's like this quick shuttle from pain into the sublime, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this sublime release of feeling and being and feeling like the repetition of the consonants give you time. Mm. I think now more than ever, people feel like there's no time. There's mm. no time to do anything. There's no time to create. There's no time to be. There's no time. But mm. I felt the gift of time in terms of the sublime mm. there as you push through you know, a subject that is painful, that you're mm. metamorph that you're, that you're ha helping experience a metamorphosis for the reader that's learning about this and mm. also for the self that has some version, right, of mm. this that they're challenging for themselves. Mm. And I want, you said that you associate and wrote that you associate the, the, the block with the river going underground. So the, mm -hmm. the babbling sound of the river kind of goes quiet and then reappears on the other side. Mm. And I wondered if this passage that you're talking about is this shuttle that you're creating in the book from a mm. painful regard into this sublime, joyful practice. Mm. Oh. oh, thank you, Jessica. Well, that 
That, that's so um so so gratifying to hear that you you felt that there in that that part of the book. That's it's 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 in some ways my my favorite part of the book. Um, it was so fun to make, and 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 I I think I think it's exactly as as you said this like this this feeling of sublime um, for me is so connected to music and 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 um, and one of one of one of the the challenges that I that I really um, savor in working in in the format of a book is is how to how to infuse it with music because i'm i feel I, I identify like primarily as a musician um um and and i and i and i and i'm and i and i'm and i'm so interested in 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 poetry's relationship with 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 music um and the stutter for me um, even though it has such a specific relationship with silence, um, the, 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 the feeling that I, that I, that I feel in the block, in, in, in the interval of, of what can seem to my, the person I'm speaking to, it can, it can seem like I have gone silent within myself there, I mean, it's a whole landscape of, of emotions, one of which is a kind of rapture. And I often feel like I'm, I kind of leave my, my body. Cause it's, it's this very, it's this very visceral thing where, where, you know, my voice feels very, like a very intimate part of my, of my, uh, of myself. And so as, 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 as I say in, in that passage that I read earlier, it feels like the stutter, like when I'm stuttering on my name, it feels like the stutter comes in and it like snatches my name. And it's a very, it's a very singular feeling and it can be very painful and very vulnerable and very frustrating, but it can also be this feeling of like release. Like I am, I am, I, you know, I am, I'm like released from from my name and all and all that carries and and from the idea of being a single being you know there's there's the the beautiful trilogy of books by the the poet and philosopher Fred Moden consent not to be a single being you know where and, and he's, he's he's of course of course quoting the philosopher Edouard Glissant mm -hmm. um and and both of those thinkers have taught me so much about the the violence of uh, being forced to think of oneself as solely a single being. So, there's, so there's this feeling of of release that the stutter often leads me to, and I wanted to find ways in the book to, yeah, to to both honor the as as, as you said, honor the pain and the grief and the shame that. That, that that stuttering has brought me into contact with and also honor that that kind of rapture that kind of release and i and i and i it felt good to to find that with with within a prayer to plants because so often with 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 plants i feel i feel i mean i just feel great joy in the presence of plants and 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 they teach me so much about about how to stutter, about about how to be present with the body, with my body, how to be present with 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 the stutter, which feels to me more and more like like a flower that grows up through my throat and out of my my mouth. That when the stutter arrives, it's like a a blossom. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I so I'm so I'm so I so I'm just gratified hearing you share your response to that part of the book it's it's it, it makes me very happy and 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 on the audiobook it's like two hours long just like that yeah. one section of me reading it and it was such a joy to to read it um i'm very i'm very i'm very i'm i'm, I'm stuttering teaches me a a lot about exactly what 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 you were just saying 
when when we have the time to be with what we want to be with stuttering for me it's it's it can it can feel like a and 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 imposition if i'm at a coffee shop and trying to order my drink and there's a line behind me and i'm stuttering on my order i can feel um that i am taking up too much time mm -hmm. um but i but i try to attend to the other side of that which is that stuttering um it can give time it can offer time and um and it, in the way that music often feels for me like i put on a song that i love and it and it feels like it like it it opens a door in the afternoon and 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 the afternoon the the way I'm, time is moving this afternoon is transformed by this 3 minute song you know so um yeah so so i i i i think i tried in the book to honor and pay homage to um different aspects of yeah what 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 stuttering can uh, can offer aster also made me think about um form and repetition in relation to ritual making as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this question uh, from an artist friend of mine, her name's Aya Zumi Rodriguez, she once asked, she's like, what's more important that you are doing the ritual or that every single thing checks a box of being authentic to the ritual, right? What's, mm -hmm. what's more important here? Yeah. And um, of, of course, my immediate response was, well, to do it. Right mm. to mm. do it in 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 context is what's most important to to practice ritual, right? Mm. Um, and there's a ritual that you describe in here in one of the essays um, that you did with friends, but there's also uh, this aspect of the repetition, kind of bringing the reader into this meditative state as well to make their own kind of rhythm with what they're experiencing. And I wanted to know what is essential to you about ritual making and how does how do those essentials transform over time? What makes those essentials for ritual making for you change? Mm. Yes. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, I love this question. I think one thing that I've learned to prioritize with rituals is intention um, is taking a moment within myself, just even to ask myself, what is my intention here? And I've taken to actually doing that before a performance. Um, I, I perform a lot, um, music and poetry mainly. And um, and performance to me, you know, it, it 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 feels to me in many ways like a form of ritual, and and you know, the and and for me, there's so much going on. You know, I, I'm I'm doing it to make a living, and I'm doing it to to connect with people, and I'm and and depending on who is hosting the performance, I'm doing it to to honor to honor that that institution or um, if I'm performing in a garden, then I then I, I I want to honor the the plants and the animals that are there. So there's often a lot a lot going on in my head, and and I and it's it's and I'm nervous and it's hard. Um, but what I've tried to do is like take a moment. I'll often like just like make a little note on my phone, like what are my intentions here. I, I was even just doing it earlier today because I have to give a talk. Uh, this weekend, um, and that that feels important for me. Even just the act, the act of of asking my, myself that, because sometimes the answer is, "Well, I'm not really sure." Um, but even that's useful useful for me me to know. But often, 
a big part of my intention when I am doing a performance with as a public a public thing um, is to um, is to express gratitude and 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 um and 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 that and that that is a present in in my my private rituals too i mean uh a ritual that i have that i love so much that i learned um a lot of it i learned from louisa um who is my who is um my teacher in so many things including how to relate to and how to develop relationships with the land and with plants and also from from the scientist Robin Robin Wall Wall Kimmerer in her book Braiding Sweetgrass, she taught me a lot about this too. But a ritual mm -hmm. I have is that when I'm going on a walk or a bike ride or even driving, um, I often will bow in front of a plant, and if I know their name, then I'll say, "Bless you, Elder." I'll call them Elder. Bless you, Elder Maple Tree, or thank you, Elder Maple Tree. And it can be very quick, but I usually like bow for a second or two, and then I continue on on my way. And for me, it feels so good to do, and it feels like like expression of gratitude, and like and and it feels like saying grace. You know, I my 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 mother taught me to say grace growing up. Um, mm. I, I, as another ritual around around gratitude, a a moment, a moment, again, like to me, like a stutter, a moment of, as you say, pause. Uh, whereas stuttering is is involuntary, um, I can also practice a voluntary pause, and have a moment where I am offering gratitude where, where I'm, I'm expressing gratitude it makes me feel very good um and so yeah i i, th I think intention um is big for me mm. yeah yeah and you have a, a relationship with recording right you have a first album and you have a second mm. album you have aster of ceremonies as um an audio book, but also album, right? It's kind of uh, hybridized between the two. But um, there's, I feel like sometimes recording as we're doing right now, <laughs> it can have a different kind of perfection, like pressure for perfection, like to get like a smooth narrative across and maybe recording puts more pressure on the sonorous act, right? And so I wanted to know what your relationship to being differently speaking and recording is. When you first had to record yourself, what were your apprehensions and how do you relate to recording now? Yes. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, this is, I'm grateful for your question because I, I, I find re recording a tremendously, um, um, it it, it I, I I it 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 really uh, it really activates my perfectionism, which is which is which is something that I'm 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 ongoingly working on accepting my imperfections, um, especially 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 when I'm when I'm recording music when I'm recording. I mean I I mean it's 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 it's. it's I, I, it, it, I, I hadn't ever really thought about these two things in, in connection with, 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 with each other until now. Uh, but when I was in, 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 in high school, the, 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 the first thing I want to connect is when I was in high school, I was in a program where we had to record oral exams, um, in English and, and in Spanish um wow. like on like a, a cassette or something or i don't remember what the technology we use and then send send that recording to um the people who would who would evaluate it and, and, and give you a grade on it um and i was um 
was terrified about this because of my um, stutter, particularly in Spanish, because I stutter more in general, more fully and more frequently in languages that are not English. Um, and my my Spanish teacher. Senora Garcia, um, an incredible teacher and so generous. She, um, I'm so grateful for her that she um, she said that we we could instead of because I because I think the way it normally was that you would stand in front of the class and give a presentation and that would be re recorded. But she said that I could do it with her privately after school, mm -hmm. which, which which made it much easier for me. And so I remember sitting down at a table with her and she started to re record and it probably took me about 15 minutes to get through like five sentences in Spanish. Um, I was stuttering, I was blossoming so, so much. She was so patient, so kind. Um, and that, and that was one of my, 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 my earliest experiences recording myself with, uh, my recording myself speaking. Um, and, and, and I hadn't connected that to my experience of recording music because with, with music, when I'm playing the saxophone and I'm recording myself on the piano or singing, yeah, I can be such a, a perfectionist and I, and I, and I, and I, and I really, it's really hard for me to wrap my head around the, just like the, the, parameters of recording. I'm, I'm much more comfortable um, in a live setting and performing. Um, and I can be a, a perfectionist about, about 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 live music too. But with with when when recording the audiobook for Aster's ceremonies, it felt to me like a really lovely opportunity. And I'm very grateful to, to Milkweed for extending me uh, the opportunity because how it felt was in some ways so the opposite of how I felt recording with was with, with with Senora Garcia, where I where I just wanted to be done with it and get through it. When recording mm -hmm. Aster, my goal was to stutter as fully and as flourishingly as I could, because because I have developed over many years very many unconscious ways of avoiding or shortening um or or suppressing um the stuttering and i'm often un uh, unaware of it and so on aster when i was recording the audiobook i, I wanted to try to focus on being aware of that for example if i sometimes if i feel a stutter like if i'm reading something and i can see five five words ahead i'm gonna have to say the word drink and i my brain tell my body tells me that i'm that i'm going to stutter on that word um there are various things that i that i that i can do to to prepare my my vocal apparatus to try to avoid or shorten that stutter and when i was reading aster i tried to to not do that as to do that as little as as possible and 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 i had as my like focus in my mind it was like so if 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 i if i were a child and i were listening to an audiobook of someone stuttering it just like never happened right with me i i, I had very little representation that i was aware of um of people stuttering openly so i was thinking about my my myself as as a child and 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 doing it for them um yeah and um i'm working on 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 an album right now and something that i'm trying to practice exactly as, as you said is like is i'm trying to practice balancing like um precision with um imperfection 
Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I find it very, very tricky to navigate. For example, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a few parts in the album where I'm singing and I, and I feel very, very self-conscious about my singing voice. And so I, I'm listening to the draft over and over and over again. I'm like, ah, I should re-record this or, oh, I should cut that. My, I was a little flat there. And I have been really trying to just, uh, just return to honoring the the intention of 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 of, of the music. And honoring my body and 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 what I was able to do with my voice in mm. ja on January tenth when I recorded this this song, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, and I and I've been studying a lot of a lot of recording artists who I really admire. Um, um, And and trying to move slowly with it, trying like I'll listen to a draft and then and then set it aside for a few days and then and come back to it. So, yeah, it's um it's interesting to hear you talk about recording because when I think of uh, black musicality, like I think about you know intentional stutterers like Johnny yeah. Gill, yeah, mm -hmm. or I think about like Jamie Fox on one song where he's like uh 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 you. Know? Like yeah. it's like this kind of like repetition, the melisma that you're talking about, and it yeah. just seems like such a natural marriage of space, yeah. right? Whether voluntary or not, both but in both ways in the context and presence, artistic, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And adding an important um, thoroughfare, I think, mm -hmm. to the experience itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my last question. Um, as a disabled poet myself, invisibly, um, in several ways, you know, we, I mentioned this to you before we started recording, like, I don't think it's always evident the paths that we cannot take, right? Yeah. Um, uh, traditional paths with traditional expectations for forwarding the art just won't do. There's, there's no space, right? Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of disabled artists figure this out in isolation so often, like, where do I go? Finding community, being your own resource center, um, in a way it can be isolating. What words would you leave other disabled Black artists that are going forward? What did you need to hear in the beginning that you wish that we could all know from the very beginning of the journey of becoming you know, a disabled artist, a BIPOC disabled artist, period. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Um, I think something that, 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 that it helps me to hear and that I, it would have helped me if I, if I could have heard it even earlier is just everything about your body, your mind, your body mind is just right. It's just right as it is. Um, there's nothing to fix and there's nothing to, yeah, there's nothing, nothing to fix. And that um, there are so many ways, obvious and not obvious, um, visible and, and invisible in which structures of, 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 of power, um, convince us that there are things wrong with our body minds, mm -hmm. that there are things that we, we need to fix. Um, and those structures of power, you know, are, are of course, you know, there are the, and then to, to me, those, those structures of power are, are so deeply interlocking that, that sexism interlocks with racism which interlocks with with ableism which interlocks with the transphobia which interlocks with classism and that there are there are there are are that we are made 
to feel um, wrong in 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 so many ways and so many so many compounding ways. Um, yeah, I would I, I I would say that, and I would say also that um, that. Um, It's just it's it's like it's like the this quote I always I always I always think of from James Baldwin where he says something along the lines of like one of the things that he loves most about reading is learning all the ways in which what what torments him what has tormented him has tormented others. Um, mm. So I would also say that you are not alone. And that it is a um, magnificent and it is a, it is a magnificent act getting through the day and that that you you getting th through another day um it could not be celebrated enough you getting through the day deserves a parade years of celebration fanfare you know like it is so so beyond amazing that you you get through the day you know so thank you so much jerome um i appreciate your time i appreciate your vulnerability and i um appreciate all the things that i had the opportunity to learn from you as an artist and i hope that everyone else can learn something from that as well um this is where the conversation unfortunately ends but um i am very 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 uh grateful to know you as an artist and a poet um and you know in 2016 in 2000 or 2017 i interviewed uh norbizi philip while i was a graduate student assistant at the center for african-american poetry and poetics at the university of pittsburgh and in the interview, she told me how she got that kind of faded text on the page. And the printer um, started to like eat the page. And as mm. it ate the page, it kept smearing and fading the text. Wow. And she was like, she considered it a kind of channeling, right? Mm. Of mm. her co-writer um, that she left mm. swords on. Um, mm -hmm her channel co-author kind of giving her form in yes. this uh, manipulating this piece of technology. Wow. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you, but Augustonians, we appreciate your patience. We know mm. the tech has been a little in and out, um, but you're still with us and it's always more than worth it. Come back August 30th, we'll have Tyreek White discussing his debut novel, We Are Haunting. And when you finish the album, Jerome, please come back. We'll do like a conversation slash listening with you. We'd love to uh, be introduced to it as freshly as possible. I would love that. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you, everybody, so much.